Hello. As you can tell from the title, this video is going to be a means to donate to organizations in support of Black Lives Matter, in support of justice for George Floyd. That is what this video is about. I just feel as though this is the type of video that needs to be put out there, especially right now, given everything that's going on, that's been going on. And I wanted to proceed with this discussion. Yes, I have already donated money out of my own pocket for this cause. And if you cannot, like I said, there's other ways to help. And if you want to financially help watching these kinds of videos, because I've seen quite a few and that's what inspired me to make my own, these are ways to help as well. I'm currently in a hotel room, as you can see. That's a long story and that's besides the point. So I'm just going to carry on. I wanted my video to be a way to raise money, but also to educate. So I put those together so that it can be a powerful thing and be positive and yeah, make a, make a difference, hopefully. So this isn't the first video about racism on my channel. I've definitely talked about race related topics. I've talked about diversity. I've talked about representation and other things that relate to race to me this is not something that is just right now important and that i'm hopping on to right now as a black person this has always mattered to me it always will and for other people i hope that if you just are now kind of waking up to certain things that you'll continue to care let's just remember that this is not something that's new this is not something that's just happening right now it can feel like such an intense thing right now but it always has been there's just been a specific recent event that has kind of triggered us to start certain conversations and to get this going genuinely this is about justice for george floyd rest in peace to george floyd and this is about making a difference and changing the world and acknowledging that he is one of many and that that's such a problem and you know, there are so many others that we don't even know about. They, they, the, there have been so many incident, instances that haven't been caught on film, haven't been caught on camera. This has been a systematic issue for years. It's undeniably real. Racism has been an issue in my own life from the moment I was born, because as I said, this is something that has been going on from before I was born. Growing up, I saw a lot of racist messages on TV. And when I was in school, a lot of people would say that I was whitewash because I was a really good student. I'm quite articulate and I was growing up. I attempted to be respectful always and I was such an overachiever. And I think people were like, oh my goodness, you're so whitewash. But that was inherently so problematic because then they're associating being black with negative qualities. And interestingly enough, nowadays, so many people are appreciating the culture or trying to appreciate it, but it's in a way that oversteps, it's in a way where it's an appropriation and it's in a way that is harmful. A lot of people see black people as a commodity. A lot of people disrespect black culture, but then use it to, to seem cool. In fact, they, disrespect black culture by using it to seem cool. And the line between cultural appropriation and cultural exchange is always going to be blurred, but here's the thing. Appropriation occurs when a style leads to racist generalizations or stereotypes where it originated, but is deemed as high fashion, cool, or funny when the privileged take it for themselves. Appropriation occurs when the appropriator is not aware of the deep significance of the culture that they are partaking in. Hip hop stems from a black struggle. It stems from jazz and blues, styles of music which African Americans created to retain humanity in the face of adversity, which itself stems from songs used during slavery to communicate and survive. On a smaller scale, but in a similar vein, braids and cornrows are not merely stylistic. They're necessary in order to keep black hair neat. <laughs> so I've been seeing this question a lot on social media, and I think it's really relevant. What would America be like if we loved black people as much as we love black culture? And right now in this moment, I'm seeing a lot of people posting about this situation, posting about race, racial issues. I see care right now. And while I'm not gonna condemn people for doing the right thing, I just never saw a lot of this from people before, and this is not a trend. I and many others are black 365 days a year all the time, and so this will always matter. Not even just to us, it will always matter, period. For instance, with the Blackout Tuesday, I just found the result of it to be pathetically ironic because once again, black people's voices were being drowned out by emptiness, quite literally. So it makes me question, how sincere their participation is. And I've seen people, numerous people who I know well, speak about their white privilege, but they appropriate my culture. They fetishize black men. They obsess over black people and, and that's not respecting it. 
and yet they're talking about their white privilege, you have to realize that's a form of your white privilege, the fact that you're able to do that. When you appropriate black culture, you're appropriating something that has meaning, that has deep roots, something that you are not a part of, to be quite frank, and so you don't have a place to be doing that, that's overstepping. People think that their adoration and celebration of black culture in that way is helpful, but it's ultimately supremely harmful. Black people are condemned for wearing their hair in a way that's a part of their culture, dressing the way that is a part of their culture, speaking a way that is a part of their culture, for demonstrating aspects of their culture. So when you do that and you get away with it or even are praised for it, that is extremely disrespectful. And that goes to show that you're not even aware of your white privilege. You shouldn't be doing that to begin with. And it's especially harmful seeing as that we're not even allowed to be ourselves. So people need to take a look in the mirror and realize where their place is in all of this, but also realizing that it's not about looking outwardly. It's also about looking inwardly. It's both. And I think a lot of people are not doing that. So, you know, I'm going to say the support that I see now, great, but it needs to continue because you have to keep the same energy and I'm going to hold you accountable for sure. I am going to expect people to maintain their allyship, not just when these intense conversations are happening throughout their everyday lives. And I specifically wanted to make this YouTube video because I don't really see many people making YouTube videos about this. I'm starting to see more, which is great, but you really do need to hold people accountable because there's so many YouTubers who have gotten in trouble for their racist pasts, but then they're not speaking about what's going on right now. If you're so sorry for using the N-word, if you're so sorry for displaying racism, show that you're sorry or else it doesn't really seem like you are. In order to do the work in your everyday life, you need to realize how using racial slurs, using certain terms, calling people certain things is harmful and problematic. It perpetuates certain ideas that already are out there in existence in the world. You need to recognize that even if you don't think you're doing something harmful, you could be there are such thing as microaggressions. For example, with what's going on right now, if a black person is dealing with something assertively, they're not being aggressive. And that alone is a microaggression. You need to Call yourself out as well as others, young or old. No one is too young to learn and people are not too old. You need to terminate racism around you and in your own homes if it's there, in your own families if it's there. The next time that someone says, what about black on black crime? Ask them, are black lives not worth protecting? The next time that someone says, I don't think they meant it that way when they said that, push back and remind them of intention versus impact. The next time that someone says, it's not like black people are the only people dying. Remind them that no, they aren't. But black people are disproportionately dying in this country and all over the world. Can we at least talk about that? The next time that someone says, my boyfriend is black, remind them that having a black boyfriend doesn't mean that you're not racist. And in fact, the idea that you wouldn't be racist because you have a black boyfriend is in fact racist. And the next time that someone says, I feel really unsafe having this conversation, ask them, are you feeling unsafe or are you feeling uncomfortable? And for the people who think that they're being helpful by appreciating black culture, you need to recognize your place. Even if you think that that love or strong sensation you have towards it is helpful and uplifting, it's not. If you are interested in, let's say black men, for example, and th that fetishization is extremely problematic. I don't know how more people aren't aware of this, but I just wanna bring light to it. I guess it's just been so normalized. That type that you have when it comes to dating can very well be so racist. Why is it that you want to be associated with a certain race and maybe not others? Think about that. That says a lot about how you view different races in general and those beliefs that you have in your head, the reason why you so strongly want to be with like a black person or you so strongly wanna be with blank, whatever race it may be, it has to do with your inherent racist beliefs, to be completely honest. The problem is even positive stereotypes is still racist. You know, if, if you claim to say that we're all equal, well then why don't you view people equally at the end of the day? It's so easy to say things, but it's also important to take a step back and look at your own worldview and adjust it, even if you have to dismantle beliefs that you have had ingrained in you for years in order to do the work, that's a part of it. And it's hard work, but allyship and being for the movement in general is about that. It's about putting in real work. It's not about just posting a black screen on social media. So I wanna use this video as a way to get the conversation started or continue certain conversations that have been started. It's important to call people out for their wrongdoings and you should and you shouldn't be scared to because it's the right thing to do at the end of the day. And even with this video, me putting myself out there, of course, there can be fears uh, associated with that or consequences even associated with that. But I'm not going to let the narrative of the sassy 
loud, problematic black women make me quiet because that narrative is used to silence me. That's the tactic. And at the end of the day, I have every right to be angry. So, but at the same time, I come at people with love and I just want to see things improve. So don't let your fear silence you. Go beyond performative activism because at the end of the day, that's just harmful. And, and speak out because like I said, no matter what consequences may come your way, it is worth it every time. I feel like members of the black community are very exhausted at this point, which makes sense. But you need to remember that being black is not what's exhausting. It's the world that is exhausting. It is the society that we live in that is exhausting. Black people shouldn't feel like they have to change themselves even though they're commonly expected to. We need to change the world instead. You need to act like this. You need to, you know, be this certain way. And it went even beyond just my physical appearance or my physical beauty. It changed the way that I carried myself. There were certain things about who I was that I felt like did not qualify or did not make me palatable or things that I felt like I couldn't share about my past or where I come from. James Baldwin has this quote like, why does there need to be a Negro in the first place? There needs to be one so you can have somebody to oppress. You can't have extreme wealth without extreme oppression. Mm -hmm. There has to be one because we live in a capitalist society. There has to be one because somebody's prof profiting off of it. We do not deserve to get murdered. That realization that we are a part of a country that does not acknowledge at its core that we have the right to exist. The idea that your country does not stand for you but has a problem when you kneel. The idea that your country does not stand for you, but has no issue kneeling on you. Black lives matter, all black lives matter. And honestly, I would not change. I'm so proud of who I am. We need to embrace who we are and eliminate all shame because power to the people, power to us. Let's keep going, let's push this forward. So to other people, acknowledge our color and honor it because not seeing color is not the goal. So thank you so much for supporting me on my journey and I wanna shout out other black creatives. There's Jackie Ina, who is very, very popular. And if you don't know about her already, she is just so unapologetically herself. She embraces her culture and she pushes and uplifts so many black creatives out there. There's also the most recent winner of Instant Influencer, Ashley Strong, Strash Me on YouTube. Such a creative and I'm so happy that she won and I'm so happy for the way that she's trying to use her platform to speak on her own life experience